Hello, gentlemen and ladies. It's July 11th. It's 2011. This is day nine, daily number 322, and it is Monday. Oh, it's fun day. Monday time. Do I look dashing or what? Oh, look at this. What is this stupid little wave I have? Yeah, yes. I'm in the mood to do it daily. I, in fact, I actually just recently showered. Um, which ordinarily shouldn't be counted as an achievement in itself, but the fact is I only recently returned from the North American Star League Grand Finals that was, like, so sick and so epic I couldn't believe it. But I, I don't like Sen. He's a jerk. All right, here we go. I'm going to tell you the story of why I think Sen's a jerk, right? I used to play with Sen back in Brood War, and he was, like, incredible, and it was really fun playing with him because he's always really nice, would always practice a lot, but I'm, I'm there with Sen. And... And Sen comes off the stage and he's like, Oh, I hate Zen Naga, that map's so hard for Zerg. And I'm like, Well, I don't, I don't dislike it that much. I mean, it's kind of hard like early on against Terran, but like after 12 minutes, it's like, it's not that big of a deal. And he goes, What you talk about? You Cas games, you newbie, you don't play, you little newbie. And I'm like, Ha, ha, ha. And the best part is, every time he called me a newbie, he would like, Buckle down laughing. You're like his shoulders would give out. He'd be like, ha 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 ha. It was horrible. He's like, you superstar caster now. You don't play games against good players. You newbie. It's okay. I forgive you. But you newbie. He kept like reassuring me and then immediately bombing me with like another jerk comment to kick me down again. So terrible. I can't believe it. It's like being like, oh, day nine. No one will ever marry you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're pretty, but you won't get married. Freaking jerk. Can't believe it. Oh my god. And he went for like 15 minutes laughing at me. Just, ha, 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 ha. Oh, you newbie. It's okay. I forgive you. Don't worry. But you newbie. Oh. Freaking jerk, man. It's okay because it's fun day Monday. I'm here to be happy now. <sighs> Can I show you the worst part about Sen? You know what the worst part is? He like. He got third place at the event, right? He, like, knocked out Xenio. Who else did he knock out? Like, like all these, like, really freaking good people. Um, I can't remember the second one because, of course, I would during the cast. But, like, against MC, like, almost pushes him to the brink. And then he takes out July in the third, fourth place match. Like, God. It's not even like I can tell him he's wrong. He's like, you newbie. I, I play with Korean players. You don't play with Koreans. I'm like, well, not that much lately. You know, I'm kind of busy. He's like, ha, ha, ha. Freaking jerk and back up his shit talk. God. Hope he gets third place in every tournament he enters. And then, you know, I even... Okay, look, I'm not I'm not that mad, but look. I even brought up Brood War. I, I was, I, someone was like, aren't you guys friends? Didn't you, like, play together in Brood War? I was like, yeah, we played together. He's like, oh, you are so bad then, too. You are so bad. Ha, 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 ha. What is this? I don't deserve this. Oh. And I was just like, yeah, because, you know, you know, said he used to beat me with his Protoss. He's like, I don't even remember. You probably remember, though, because you a newbie. Ha, <laughs> just kidding, I'm kidding. But you newbie. Brutal, man. It was like a brutal weekend. This thing stuck out to me hard. It was the worst in the world. Some people are just like, yeah, I see in the chat, they're like, send for his day night show match. No. No, I don't want a Sen vs. Day 9 show match. I, I know the outcome of the Sen vs. Day 9 show match. I can tell you right now. I'm almost as good as July. I'm just going to put it just like that. That's how I'm going to say it. We're going to step into Funday Monday because this is about being happy on Monday, the best day of the week. So, today's Funday Monday topic is as follows. You may not build pylons in your base. That's it. That's all you got to do is not build them pylons in the base. Let's go ahead and begin this match with a little bit of a licensor action. We're going to go ahead and get the sound started because it is currently time. For some fun day monday age and right off the bat, Licensor, going to show us a little bit of victorious action. We see, ah, oh, hey, mate, good luck and have fun. Now, this is some key timing right here. You're noticing the the uh, over-the-top good luck. It's around the 25-second mark. That's always a good way to determine if your opponent's doing some sort of cheese. And the reason I know this is because I 2v2 with my friend Tristan, who somehow has some weird clairvoyance based upon when people say good luck and have fun. We'll be playing a 2v2, and then the, at 45 seconds, the guy will be like, GL, and Tristan will be like, scout here, and he'll ping some location on the minimap, and I go there and there's like four barracks building and he's like yeah well of course who says good luck at the 45 second mark you say that at the start of the game unless you're cheesing my god that's genius i'm gonna have to get some good glhf scout timing started meanwhile we're gonna head back to licensor thanks look at carpathian it's just like to thank you so much and licensor Ooh, what is licensor doing oh he's going by the watchtower 
And here it comes. He almost has enough money for his purse. First pylon. His purse pylon. There's the purse pylon. Going down. Carpathian doesn't suspect a thing. It's just now heading over. Uh-oh. And here it is. The gateway in our introductory Fun Day Monday game. We see Licenser spending his money on Chrono Boost. Not going to go down any sort of excessively cheesy route. He is going to go straight up, all out, crazy business standard. The Automaton 2000 can't believe it. He's admiring this probe and wants to hang out. Cheese? I mean, kind... I... I mean... I mean, we see Licenser was, like, gearing up to gas. He's just building his pylons in weird places, right? And, of course, Gouda. Sausage? I mean, Licenser, I think, is doing a good distracting technique. He's just talking about food. And I always think that's an successful way to distract the opponent, especially a hungry opponent. But if you're someone like me, I would have no fan of salami. The Carpathian's even participating. What? I mean, I'm not that talkative when I play, but do you talk about food when you play? Is this common? Is this what people do in games when they just get in there? It's like, hey, good luck, have fun. I love Sherbert. And the other guy's like, dude, game paused. You you like Sherbert? I love Sherbert. What, what else? What else do you like to do? And they have this friendly conversation. They're like talking about, oh yeah, when I go to Kiwi Berry, I always get mangoes. Every time the mangoes are fucking incredible. They have this bonding experience. And you know what happens? They unpause and some guy four gates all in. And it ends with like, ah, oh, fuck you! <laughs> like, cheesing bastard. And he leaves the game. But for that moment, with Sherbert brought into the mix, everything was sugary and sweet as can be. Carpathian. At the end, talking about food, Licenser doesn't have that foregate planned, as we can see yet. Oops, still chrono boosting away at the Nexus. Building his cybernetics core. Doesn't want to keep all his buildings clustered here, because that's stupid. So he's going to go ahead and build his cybernetics core at the least stupid location on the map, given the fact that this is the Fun Day Monday theme. So we do see, uh-oh, and the Zealot is out! Ripping apart one probe, Licenser. It ain't Gouda. I don't even know what that mean. It's a till sitter, mate. Monster. This is probably what StarCraft sounds like to people who don't play StarCraft. Yeah, he went for a proxy four racks when I did a 15 hatch expo and didn't build enough spine crawlers in time. And the parents are like, <gasps> Oh my god, they're gonna grow up and be violent because they just don't understand. And now that people are talking about till sitters and Gouda and Salami, and I'm just like, I understand Salami. I hope they're talking about a sandwich. I sincerely hope this is a sandwich discussion, because otherwise, I worry about them. I worry about whether they're going to be violent people, or maybe something French, like Camembert. Camembert is a type of cheese. Welcome to the Day 9 Daily, where we can identify cheese on a regular basis. I'm not a real cheese person, but that's fine. I am sort of a seven-pool cheese person. And uh-oh, here comes the ones out. It's going to be able to do a slight bit of damage. Maybe pick off a probe or two. Carpathian freaking out. Shitting a fully decorated Christmas tree based upon the presence of a single zealot. Though he does have triple the forces and even more coming out. He's got a can in the front. He's got to pull the probes off mining, and he is back. Everything's going to be absolutely fine as soon as I stop drooling so heavily. This is actually, I, I call this caster mishap. Whenever something weird or goofy happens as a result of casting, I know you guys want to watch the game, but just listen to me. I'm drooling, okay? Sometimes I'll be in a flowery sentence that will be going and going and going and going, and it will be filling more and more and more. And if I'm at an event like MLG, if it's my daily, I can just... I can just do that, and it's fine, it's not a big deal, but when I'm at an MLG, sometimes I'm in the middle of a sentence, and it just, and I'm like, no, like, Marcus, I like, hit the cough button, which mutes my microphone as this, comes out, but that's okay, today, we're not gonna have that caster mishap happen, no caster mishap happening, Licenser is going to be going for some more buildings spread out in locations that are marginally stupid but still smart based upon the circumstances of the constraint system in the fun dayest of Mondays. So now we see Licenser moving around. He cannot build pylons in his base. Car oh, Carpathian moving down. No, kill the pylon first. And there it is. He's going to start working away and he gets it. Kill the opponent. Looks like he's moving out, but it's okay. Licenser. 
is gone for a while and he has more gateways at the front. He's just started the Dark Shrine. He's Chrono Blues. That is the latest warp gate that I have ever seen. And he's working away at the forge, just getting damaged. It's taken down Carpathian in a good position. That's okay. There is a gateway here. Carpathian going to try to power it up and steal it. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be cool if you could steal buildings with a pylon? Oh. Oh, that would totally shift the PvP metagame. People would actually simply not make any units. They would just build pylons at each other. So we're going to go back to this game. We do see now Licenser doing his absolute best to take out these pylons. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Looks like something, some USB device was just disconnected from my computer. Don't worry about a thing, though. We do see Carpathian ribbing through. It's a DT! It's a DT Licenser's Dark Shrine gets up in time. He's going to start working it away. Does he have any DTs in the main? Looks like no. He's gonna st he has Incidentally, Licenser has some gateways here. In addition to his gateways here and his cybernetics core here and the old gateways that were there and a pylon here. And it looks like he's gonna start working down this nexus. But no, DTs are up and running. Carpathian. Getting creative with a pylon placement. It will be able to detect everything from this smoke here to this smoke over here as well as half of the top of this pylon and to its left. That will be detected. So we're gonna go back to the game now. Carpathia now. Oh! One-shotting the DTs because this DT uses the op zealot. Tries to spank some probes but it is disallowed. And here comes Licenser moving on up. Oh! A cannon at the front is... <laughs> Here's some defense getting constructed. He might be able to get one pile, and he gets it. But two more pylons go down. Licenser, not concerned, though. He has the main in his grasp. He's going to be able to take out this cannon, but at the natural expansion, it looks like the cannons have been successfully constructed. There's a there's the loudest DTs in the whole wide world doing lots and lots of damage. More DTs swinging up. Oh, no. Carpathian. It's okay. He's going to be able to secure any DT movement within the shroud of this trapezoid thing. Meanwhile, Licenser retaking his assimilator. Still has some gateways here. Some some spread going on. And oh, he manages to take it out. It's fine. He has most of his tech hidden. Just look at how the vision looks for Carpathian. He sees a Nexus. And a Nexus. And some DTs. That's about it. I mean, Carpathian probably suspects that buildings exist somewhere. But he doesn't know yet. This is what I always like to talk about in other dailies that I call hiding something normal. Not hiding a sneaky surprise. I'm just hiding my gateways. I just have a hidden cybernetics core as well as hidden pylons and everything else. It's a good way to throw your opponent off because Carpathian doesn't know what to expect. At the very least, he will be suspecting some DTs in the near future. So we do see the robotics facility going down by Carpathian. Some gateways here because, oh hell, why not? Oh! Carpathian does manage to successfully warp in some more Zealous Protected Proxy Pylon, but it is not enough. Carpathian will be taken down. The damage is done. The frowns have begun. <laughs> that was good. Licenser building cannons, building Archons, because hell, why not? But the stalker count from Carpathian is getting remarkably high. Does he have any sort of detection? No, he's actually just rebuilding the, his main, which I guess we're going to call his second natural. Carpathian now taking out the destructible rocks. Licenser are taking out his destructible gateways. And it looks like they're going to think about getting some sort of confrontation going, but it looks like the Archon Zealot Force of Licenser will completely circumvent everything. Oh my goodness, going directly up north. And he's going to begin killing off the front. This is absolutely silly. Carpathian now moving in towards the main, trying to pick off some... No, he's going to be pulling back. He's going to be trying to take out this gigantic force. That's getting taken down. Will he go for his expansion? Oh no! He runs up into the main where it's safe. The probes pull back and amazingly, Licenser pulls back. But it looks like Carpathian is out for blood. He's retaking his third natural. He's going to be able to get that income going. Carpathian now trying to get himself an armor upgrade to combat the army that's about... I guess it's uh, about twice as big as his. I don't know. I don't know what math classes I've been to that 42 times 3 halves is... No, uh... 
I'm I'm messing up my math today. You'll note. <laughs> you know, uh, twice as much. You know, you know what equation gives you uh, twice as much. You take what you have and then you multiply it by two. I I got a three halves out of there. I mean, even ignore the three halves. I don't know how I got a three involved in the equation in the slightest. Because if I said four, I could have said four halves, and that would have been two as well. But when I'm like three, I'm like, he's doing three one, one halves of, he's doubling it. Man. I actually do have a degree in mathematics. That's the most remarkable thing about this all. But that's fine. I deal with letters, not numbers. His army is 2x of the other guy's armies. Ah, very good. Licensor. Morphia. Incidentally, avoid Ray. Incidentally, avoid Ray. And a forge as well. Oh, look, he, he rebuilt some more cannons. I'm going to build cannons here as well as by his, I guess, six natural. I'm going to try to plant some over here next to my gold, but not before building some, some behind my base next to my Twilight Councils. The building placement from Licensor is immaculate. It almost looks as though he's playing Civilization V, which is a really good game. So now we do see Licensor going in for the kill. Carpathian trying to utilize Micro. It's unsuccessful. You really are ridiculous, though very funny. Thanks, man. Happy faces, GG. It's for the fun day, Monday. This is the intro game. Oh, God. What's wrong, Carpathian? You're becoming a star, hopefully. Look at Licensor. Look at the positivity coming out of him. I certainly hope not. I'll certainly keep that in mind next time I do a no pylon fun day Monday. Shit. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and wrap this up. I was thinking about a song five minutes ago. Licensor, don't, don't, don't ever, don't ever trust your instinct there. Wait, Carpathian just said, I was thinking about a song five minutes ago. Oh yeah, Void Rays, Void Rays, messing up my Void Rays. For any of you who don't know what he's talking about, uh, if you should go to youtube.com slash husky starcraft, I'm sure you'll get some answers on that. So hey, it looks like Carpathian is down to two food and he successfully leaves the game, so welcome to the intro to the Fun Day Monday for this week, which I'm rather fairly, as it turns out, excited about. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get this bad boy started. Let me even go to my extremely organized notepad where I have the replays li listed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check out a game by Chicken Z Zestin. I think that's how you say this name. Now, interestingly, what a lot of these games turned out to be uh, was less of look at my funny placement and more of I'm totally fucked, I hope my DTs will help me out, which is fine, because this is Protoss week on the Day 9 Daily, and that is an essential tool to all Protosses around the world. So we're going to go ahead and hop into the next game. Let's go ahead and check it out. We have Chicken Zestin. Versus Mordigan in the top left. So Chicken Zestin is going to open the game by having his probes make a nice triangle pattern. It's kind of like synchronized swimming, except it's synchronized doing absolutely nothing. It is Fun Day Monday, the best day of the week. We're going to see Mordigan give the face. There you go. Yes, there it is. The pylon by Chicken Zestin in the corner. You two. Now, I'm calling him Chicken Zestin. It might not be Chicken Zestin. It might be Chicken Zestin. Chicken Zestin. Uh, which means that Chicken Zestin might be eating too much chicken. He might have too much protein in his diet and needs to incorporate more fruit. So we do see Chicken Zestin going for the gateway on 13, the assimilator following it up. We see Mortigan going for his early orbital command as well as producing a multitude of marines on the wrong side. Oh, Chicken Zestin has a Supply Block Zealot coming. There's a regular Zealot. He's going to have to build a... Oh, no, he's been spotted. He needs to get a Cybernetics Core down. Don't worry, he has a plan. Here it comes. Chicken Zestin is getting a second gateway. Ooh, building the Contingency Pylon in case he needs to morph in things by the shrubbery. Double Gas coming up by Chicken Zestin. His energy is getting awfully high. And he's getting awfully no probes in mining. There we go. We also see, it looks like the Chrono Boost on the Warp Gate. Twilight Council going down. The DT is an excellent tool in StarCraft II. Another Contingency Pylon, as well as another Contingency Pylon, as well as a Contingency Nexus. There comes a point where if you have too many Contingencies planned, it means that your strategy doesn't actually exist. 
So, um, this is fine, though, because it's Fun Day Monday, and you can do whatever you want. If you lose, you were doing Fun Day Monday. It doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and come back here to the game. We see Chicken Zessen. It looks like he is slowly beginning to accumulate. Well... Well, I guess he's accumulating pylons. That's one thing he's accumulating, and... Whoa! Chicken Zestin! Preemptive departure from the main nexus. Let's see that in instant replay. Oh, the Chicken Zestin cam. All right, the contingency nexus incoming. Someone's life is for ire. It might be this fine gentleman. His life is for ire. We see the probes. Here comes the push. And all of a sudden, whoa, get out of there in time. Oh, crap. Run, contingency probes. Moving to the top right contingency location. That's okay. We're keeping a contingency set of seven at the front. And the Dark Templar are at the front. Oh, they managed to slice and dice one and a half. We do see the Terran army is kind of just marching around. And it's going to find... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It finds the contingency stalker. It's taking it down. And it looks like the Dark Templar from Chicken Stains... Or Chicken Zestin. I'm going to misstate that all the time. Parked outside the front. Ooh, this is gonna be... It's okay. There's a backup plan. There's a nexus. And don't forget, the main nexus is still mining. <laughs> Three gas... Yes! Excellent! The backup plan, abandoning the main and unabandoning it. It's gonna work out fine. So chicken zest and down to 31 food. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, we have the infamous no wall off. Indeed. No, this might not even be ultralisk proof. Look at the marauders just marching right out there. What are you doing, Morgan? Oh, he's found the Nexus. He's taking it out. He does have the killer seven marauder, two medevac mix. The eight medevac mix. That means both of those marauders will be full. And by marauders, I mean medevacs. But if the marauders have been eating recently, they might be full too. Listen, there's this thing called a caster mishap, right? Where you don't mean to state that the marauders are full. And you know what happens? You go with it. If I'm at a tournament and I state that, I'm going to be like, those Marauders are so full, I hope they don't get feedbacked. And Marcus, you know what he'll do? He'll be like, that's absolutely right. That is an essential misstep that younger players do not make. I will never raise my child to not feedback full Marauders. And I'm like, God bless you, Marcus. And that's why we don't like to interact with the crowd after those ones. Uh, Day 9, you do realize that you said that, no, I didn't. I said no such thing. You need to learn to play Brood War. Now it looks like the Dark Templar moving into the main. Oh, yes, the contingent DTs. If you're losing, no big deal. Just kill off all of his stuff. And amazingly, Chicken Zitstain, or Chicken Zestain, what did I call him? <laughs> oh, whoopsie daisy. His name is Chicken Zestain. Chicken Zestain. In the bottom right, he's mining himself a couple of more minerals. <laughs> He's <laughs> now scanning to kill off the Dark Templar. And oh, it looks like Chicken Zesting will be coming in to kill more Marauders, but he does have these two expansions. Weirdly enough, we're at a 24 probe, 1 DT versus 12 SCVs and a little bit of army. And it looks like he's found, oh no, the two DTs. He needs to kill off a lot, but the scan by Mordigan manages to take it off. And now Mordigan going to the last remaining hope. The bottom right expansion, but oh no, it looks like Chicken Zestin is going to be warping in three gateways in between these marauders at the right and the base at the left. And they're morphed in. What will they be warping in? Well, is this, is this actually the only pylon on the map? Other than this one... Wow, he has two pylons, he has two options. He's gonna, he's gonna increase his options by three halves by building the third pylon. I had a math degree, fucking assholes. <laughs> God, oh, my viewers are jerks. You still get it, man, you noob. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, but, but you noob. So now we have these three Dark Templar moving through the map. To the expansion, using the Stutter Step DT Micro. Pulling back, there's... It's okay, there's still an entrance here. Doing a little slicing and dicing. Moving in. Go, Chicken Zestin. It's chicken Zesting. Gonna rip them apart, but oh no! Oh no, a rave and the Marauders are getting pulled back. But all of a sudden, we find out the essential tool of Dark Templars. 
that they actually also incidentally deal damage. So Chicken Zestin just kills off the Marauders with the power of slicing things in half. And there we do see the Dark Templar moving through. And they will continue the assault. Oh no! The Marauders full after an incredible buffet breakfast. Now pulling back, they're at the wrong location on the map, but again, it would be hard to find an opponent's expansion if he started here, expanded here, and then abandoned his workers here, and split some of them over here, only to retake this expansion again. I'd be confused too, but look at them huffing and puffing with the power of stim and times for a replay progress. And it looks like Mordigan able to delay his death a bit longer. There's the mules coming down. Never a resource out in sight, but at this point in time, Chicken Zestin continuing to build only Dark Templar, because if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And there it is. Oh my gosh, cutting down his pylon count. And there's the Dark Templar, amazingly on hold position, taking down everything. Yes, indeed, and there's the advancement forward. He's picking them off, Mordigan, and amazingly expanding over there oh my gosh there's confusing your opponent with expansions and then there's just making people concerned about your well-being due to the placement of your expansions chicken zestin you're gonna look not keep it up i'm gonna come back to the game there it is here comes the dts moving into the main killing off the barracks Killing off the everything. How many units does the Terran have? He has, oh no, he has two ravens that are doing tricks, spinning in circles, but the buildings are dying and they come up to the top, they kill off this nexus, but this one in the corner. How is this game even happening? We see Mortigan re-expanding to the expansion that's behind this one. He somehow hasn't seen it. And he's going to be transferring Marauders. And oh, he spots it. Oh, but the DT Tech is going to get completely and totally denied. Mortigan needs to quickly, as quickly as he can, get an orbital command. Okay, he does have one, but here come the DTs. He needs to lift it. Oh, he misses it. But it's fine. He still has four medevacs and four Marauders. He's pulling back, and it looks like, oh my gosh, he tries to stim and target the Nexus. And he leaves without a GG. Well, now that you have learned the definition of a caster mishap, you can make fun of me a lot. So let's go into the next game. I have my notepad file helping to illustrate what the next game that I should be doing is. And it's going to be a man named Elegant Boar. That is right. I just have to find it because I had to watch a lot of these. There it is. I am now loading up the Elegant Boar game. Here we go, you guys. Going to go into the next game if I can hit my hotkeys right. It's Squiggy the Terran. Squiggy the Terran is up against Elegant Boar. Yet again, we see the impressive technique of sending out the probe early on. And there it is, Squiggy. Completely underprepared for the pylon that's about to go down right by his coral. Elegant Boar. Oh my god, Squiggy doesn't suspect a thing. Because he's normal. Who the hell would do this on any other day but Monday, the greatest day of the week? And it looks like he's gearing up to build. Could it be a forge? Could it be a cannon? At the very least, we see some complex patterns going down. And there it is. It's going to be a forge. He's going to cannon rush the front. Squiggy. Oh no, going for a refinery before barracks play. This technique generally used by players when they want to be getting fast factories, but you know what doesn't stop a cannon rush? Gas. But oh my god, he sees it. He sees it. All right, Protoss is going to begin the process of making the cannons. He's making it surprisingly far back, but it's okay. One barracks going down, two barracks going down. Squiggy just beginning to mine some of his gas. Has a gross excess of minerals, but who wouldn't in a panic situation like this? Kill it. Kill it. Uh, retreat. All right, elegant boar. The most majestic and elegant of things with tusks. Building photon cannons outside the front. He's not advancing forward. He's definitely doing a cannon contain. He's going to be containing the Terran player with cannons. And when someone says Elegant Boar, what about tanks? Elegant Boar crosses his hooves as best he can. And he prays, as all boars do. 
We see now the gateway going down. It looks like our uh, Protoss hero, Elegant Boar, has yet to take any gas geysers. There they are going down, taking himself a gas geyser. Oh, building a cybernetics core. We also see Squeaky. Oh, wants to make sure his cannons are just out of range of tanks placed up on the high ground. And there's the factory going down. A command center by Squiggy. Building another tech lab. Oh, and here it comes, Squiggy. Bam! Landing the factory. And now he's going to be able to build a siege tank. And there it is. Siege tank coming out for Squiggy. Contain of cannons. We see the warp gate coming out. Elegant Boar can follow it up with some more gateway pressure. Zealot number one coming out. Another pylon going down just in case a, I don't know, a banshee floats around this side and just completely kills the shit out of this containment. But there's the Zealot now moving forward. No, oh, it doesn't work. Squiggy prepared in time. And Squiggy boldly taking a hidden expansion. It takes a special kind of boar to build two stargates. After a cannon contained, that boar's so happy. He's taking his hose, clop, 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 just like clapping them together. It must be so hard to micro... <laughs> banging around like a freaking walrus. Elegant boar. I'm impressed with your Gosu-ness. He's building the double stargate ploy. He's going to be going for the cannons, and then he's going to be going for the void rays, because keep in mind, if he is going for a siege tank response, the siege tank will be unable to shoot up. Does look like Elegant Boar has taken himself a fast expansion, utilizing the effectiveness of the cannon contain, the effectiveness of phoenixes. And the hope that his opponent doesn't build a single air unit all game long. Another pylon going down. The siege tanks beginning their dirty work. Ooh, it looks like they're taking a lot of damage. Elegant Boar is going to need to do something with these phoenixes fast. Nice! That's why you need a lot of phoenixes. I always like to say when I'm doing real analysis that you really need to have large numbers of phoenixes to really do anything. Because if you don't, that's what happens. Here I come, elegant boar phoenixes. And there he's <laughs> clopping on his mouse and keyboard trying to micro, trying to hit the G button. Do you know how hard it is to hit the G button with a hoof? Oh my god, that's impossible. It's so hard to do things with hooves. But he's hitting the G button and there it is, the tank. <laughs> RUN! Right, that's the problem with one phoenix for backup. You need to have like six. Poor elegant boar wiping tears up with his hose. Oh god, you must gouge your eyes. That must suck being dumped as a boar. God, that must be terrible. Being dumped as a boar? Can you imagine that? God, wiping tears off with your hook trying to pat your friend on the back? You have hooves. Oh gosh. It's a good thing being dumped as a human is fun. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but being dumped as a human is like the greatest thing. I love being dumped. Being dumped is like my favorite thing known to man. Are you kidding me? Oh, God, I love being dumped. It's so great. Because let me tell you something. When you're dumped, you may have lost the girl. But you know what you gained? Entitlement. That's right. You have gained entitlement. You know what happens if you're on like a Wednesday and you see like a like a fudge Sunday and you like really want it, but oh I shouldn't, I'm on a diet, oh gosh, oh you know. And then you give in, you're eating it, you're not even thinking about how delicious the fudge Sunday tastes, you're just hating on yourself like I'm a terrible person, I gotta sign up to a marathon, I gotta burn these no calories, it's so good. But when you're dumped you wake up, you have that fudge sundae for breakfast, and you down it with a beer, because you're sad, you earned it. And you think, oh, that was amazing, I'm going to do that again for lunch. I'm going to take a Valium and spend the afternoon in outer space. Oh, God, being dumped is awesome. Like, if you ever go to, like, a Dick's Sporting Goods or something like that, and you just buy some ping pongs and you're at the cash register, or ping pong balls and you're at the cash register, you know why you bought the ping pong balls? Because you just got dumped. Ping pong's a fun sport, but you haven't done it in years. Not since you were a kid, but now that you've been dumped, you're 25 buying 12 packs of ping pong balls because fuck yeah, ping pong. And when you're at the cash register and the cashier with her rote, standard, completely redundant phrases, hello sir, how are you doing today? You know how you answer it? Shitty. I'm terrible. I got dumped. And she's like, oh my god. Dude, Scanning your ping pong balls, and now all of a sudden you're bonding. She's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. And you're like, yeah, I got dumped, and it was horrible. 
Oh, she even cheated on me with like a goat. And she's like, oh, you're lying now. You're making a story up. But you can make stories up when you're dumped because you're entitled. That's what you gain when you've been dumped. That's, oh, God, I love being dumped. I think we're in the middle of Fun Day Monday. I think I went on a tangent. And suddenly I'm concerned that I did that same tangent in another Fun Day Monday. Uh-oh. All right, consult the chat. Dear chat, have I done this already? Have I, have I, is this, is this a recurring joke? Oh, man. Well, at least I made it enough different that it was pretty good, right? Oh, no, no. Okay, good. Thank you, chat. Thank you for the confirmation. Whew. Oh, thank God, man. I would have been so stressful. I would have had to go out and get myself dumped to cheer myself up. Let's go back to this game where we have Elegant Boar, the sad boar. The saddest boar known to man. Now he's making the void race. He sees the siege tanks doing the insane amounts of damage. And Squiggy has taken a hidden expansion with the laziest orbital command ever. It's just tanning. It's just tanning. Looking up, looking down, moving back. Looking up, looking down, moving back. Moving left, moving up. There it is, there's the mules going down, and in the meantime, we do see the siege tank lines that continue to do absolute treachery to the front contained of the elegant boar, and there it is. Five gateways in the center of the map, because you're not allowed to build pylons in the main base. And there it is, elegant boar, building multiple pylons, and now Squiggy, trying to come forth. So many tech, this barracks has built three freaking tech labs. My god, he should be a factory worker just churning tech labs out all day. And Squiggy with the medevac, he goes out to do some drop harassment to the base. I'm gonna drop him. Well, I guess there's a base here. Attack! I saw MMA do it, I'm gonna do it too. There he is. TSL Puma would drop this base, and TSL Puma would find a Twilight Council with an 88% done zealot leg speed upgrade and kill it off. Lift him, lift him up, take him down, lift him up, take him down, lift him up, take him down. The Call of the Phoenix. Lift him up. Take him down. We see uh, another cybernetic core being built. In addition to this one, that way you can get the double upgrades. You can get the plus one air weapons, plus hallucinate. We see multiple pylons being constructed as the elegant boar weeping tears of hairy, grossy boarness. Now getting himself unsupply blocked, wiping those tears up with his hoof. That poor thing. Banshee's coming out now for Squiggy. Banshee's an excellent response to Phoenix's her feeder feeder. Now it looks like Elegant Boar knows the value of expanding even when you're playing like a fool. Buildings in the mid. Blink on the root. More, you know. Oh, yes, researching a forge. I mean, there's tanks right there. And it looks like the scout viking from Squiggy is going to be able to spot it. Here he comes. He's coming down the ramp. Oh, no! The laziest orbital command ever gets spotted. Run! Get out of there! Run! Get out of there! Oh, at least he had a cool tan. And we also see Squiggy taking out all the Stargates that he can. Getting the money back from those Phoenixes. And now we've done enough. Pull back for the retreat. Man, that's enough fighting for the day. Let's go into tower defense mode. The Banshees from Squiggy moving out. The elegant boar. The elegant majestic boar with a high cut slip on her dress. Elegant boar is a woman now, because nothing is more elegant than one of those high slits on the thigh. Especially if it's a boar. Ooh, that goes so well with your ivory tusks. And there it is, Squiggy now. Taking out so many probes, Elegant boar has not yet responded, and it looks like, oh no, the cloaked banshees! Killing off absolutely everything in response. Oh my god, Squiggy, you got blunk. But it looks like more banshees out. Cloak, cloak them. Cloak the banshees. Oh! And it looks like Squiggy, once again, ripping apart all of the workers in the mineral line here. We don't see... Oh no, he hasn't built a robotics facility yet. He needs to do that. He's working through the main base with many a Blink Stalker blinking forward to make sure that that lazy orbital command doesn't get caught either. Holy crap, that's a lot of Stalkers. There's actually 46, 52, with only 32 probes out. Squiggy, naked, now naked, having one starport floating on the corner of the map, trying to stay alive as long as he can. Squiggy, eliminating probes to the best of his ability, taking out the linchpin assimilators, the core of the strategy of his opponent. There's another orbital command being taken down. Oh no, he gets eliminated. Huh, land. Squiggy! That's not an orbital command, Squiggy. That's a starport, Squiggy. Why is it being landed, Squiggy? I don't know how you're looking at this, Squiggy. This is a freaking star, Squig, Squiggy. Now making a starport, and it looks like, uh-oh, uh-oh, the Banshees continuing to deal a lot of damage. But that 
wasn't an orbital command, Squiggy. Squiggy says GG and types out as he has no more buildings left. <sighs> but amazingly enough, that is not the fail game of the day. It is not the fail game of the day. In fact, the next match is the fail game of the day. Every Funday Monday, we have the wonderful submission that is known as the fail game. And today's fail game is from Salt and Pepper. The fail game from none other than Salt and Pepper. I'm gonna open up all my fancy overlays, and here we are. We have Salt and Pepper in the top right, and in the bottom left we have P Moss as the blue toss in the bottom left. Salt and Pepper, who went through many a choice name, such as Shiva Coriander, King Corn, and he settled on Salt and Pepper. Diva Fruit, no, that's not quite the Ring League. One billion! <laughs> That doesn't even make any sense, Salt and Pepper. The leagues are metals like diamond and bronze. Yes, a metal like diamond. Did you know that there's almost no leagues that aren't a metal in the name, but I managed to like locate the one that was not a metal? Diamond. Wait, is diamond considered? I don't think it's considered a metal. Now all of a sudden I'm looking like a complete idiot. This is a caster mishap. This is what happens when my brain's like, don't worry, think out loud, it's fine. I'm like, is diamond a metal? Do humans have photosynthesis? These are things that I should just keep in my mouth. If only I had a little bit less of a tongue, it would be very hard to say words like eclectic. <laughs> that wasn't a caster mishap, that was a caster kick ass. It would be very hard to say the word eclectic without a tongue. Great, a five year old. <laughs> I guess that was salt and pepper. Yeah! Building the pylon, literally, there's exactly what we look. Come to the PMOS cam, all right? If you're going to build no pylons in your base, all right, let's come to the PMOS cam. Here we go. Here's PMOS. All right, look at this. Literally, here he is coming along and literally builds the pylon, touching the probe. The probe is touching the pylon. I have run into, like, paned glass doors before. But that would feel so weird to run into a building that just suddenly got warped in front of you. Ah, oh, oh, is that a pylon? What a jerk. Oh, great, a five-year-old warping in buildings in my forehead? Buildings don't go on forehead. What are you doing there? Pylon going down, PMOS. Salt and Pepper's bringing the scout to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Probe dueling, probe dueling. Oh, no, it looks like Salt and Pepper. I'm gonna get the lower end of it. PMOS, gonna continue to not make probes. Oh no, PMOS. Try and do the best micro he can. PMOS does see the gateway go down because Salt and Pepper has no qualms at all with bringing the scouting to you. Sultan's base coming soon to a map near you. There's a forge going down from PMOS, the delayed response, but the appropriate response nonetheless. He's building a pylon, protecting his ramp from anything that doth wander up. But what is this? What is this, PMOS? Oh my god, Salt and Pepper really is building everything right there. There's a fast forge. Salt and Pepper knows what he wants to do. There's one pylon, there's a cannon. He needs to hurry up. He builds another pylon. PMOS is successfully walled off. And here he is, he's in the back. Oh, PMOS getting ready to build a proxy pylon. Gas going down from Salt and Pepper because he wants to be able to get his upgrades going. And Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper going for a contain. I kid you not, a photon cannon here to contain this path, a photon cannon here to contain about this much. Salt and Pepper. Do it, Salt and Pepper. Let's start mining some gas. Alright, photon cannon going down, P-Moth full, full racked up booth of charge going down, p -Moss. Uh oh, uh oh, p -Moss has the probe and the runaround. p -Moss, he's at 13 food. p -Moss has 13 food worth of stuff and here it comes! Oh! A pylon! A pylon! A pylon! PMOS! PMOS, get him! No, oh, salt and pepper, attack! Mine! 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 Pylon! Cannon! 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 Hurry, salt and pepper! Expand quickly! PMOS says good game. Now, this isn't an Idra play, he's not gonna be leaving now. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, PMOS did a premature in your face GG. That's right, PMOS doing the smack talk. Here it is. We see he's building the cannons behind the base. I'm an unstoppable force. I am like the tidal wave. I am like the flood. 
You can do nothing except say good game and weep. But it's okay, the probe transfer, a zealot here, ready to secure and defend any upcoming expansion. And in the meantime, it looks like Salt and Pepper not concerned not concerned because he has a contain up. There we do see the cybernetics core of Salt and Pepper going down. Salt and Pepper still doing good. Still has a reasonable amount of probes going in here. He's actually ahead in probes, ahead in units, and ahead in tech. Actually, Salt and Pepper's doing great, but it looks like Pimoff's gonna sneak out with another probe. <gasps> Where is he going? To the natural... Oh, he's going everywhere except over here. And we do see it looks like... A Stargate! It's going to be Void Rays out of Salt and Pepper. He's allowed to build these here. He's just not allowed to build things up in his main, where Pimas has the premature GG pylons bringing the noise. And there's the Stargate going down from Pimas. It takes a special kind of Protoss to cannon rush, say GG prematurely, and follow it up with Void Rays. It would complete the trifecta to do the Cannon Rush, Void Ray, DT, all on one base combo. Let's see if Pimas can pull off the Triple Crown. It's going to be an upcoming what? Well, Zelts and Stalkers at the front. We do see one Void Ray coming out, and oh my gosh! It's the infamous 10 minute Cannon Rush. Uh oh, it, it does get spotted. Sultan Pepper responds with cannons of his own, and oh no, the Zealots swarm in, and the Void Ray appears. <gasps> I better get more Stargate, says Pimas. He wants to be able to build Void Rays at triple production, but will he have enough gas? No. No, you cannot support three Stargates on one base. I'll just throw that at you now as a little bit of learning, because I'm fun day Monday. Fun day frickin' Monday. You know what we like to do? You know what we like to do? We like to learn. Huh? Learning? Are you learning? I'm learning. What's everyone's favorite activity? being dumped. What's the caveat? Except if you're a boar. Or I guess any hooved animal. Ever saw a horse happy to be dumped? No, it's just turned me to glue. I don't care. I'm miserable. More cannons going down by P. Moss. Trying to break the cannon contained with cannons. It doesn't work out as well as he would like. And now we have two Stargates making. One Stargate making. And Gateway's going down. Uh-oh. But the counter to Void Rays is Void Rays. He loses the Void Ray to the Void Rays and they're charging up on the Void Rays and he takes them down and takes out another Void Ray. Two Void Rays, suddenly, the instruments of destruction and annihilation. We see Salt and Pepper maxing out on the resources lost, and he takes out the pile, and he's targeting the Stargate. Will he manage to get the Void Ray out in time? And the answer is yes! And he takes down the Void Ray. Stalker's coming in, Void Ray's being taken out, utilizing the act of Micro. Pimos using all of his 78, an impressive amount of APM for a player who cannon rushes prematurely, says GG, goes three Stargate Void Rays and produces out of two of them, and kills a lot of shit with those Void Rays. So we see him coming back right now, approaching and killing off the pylon, the warp in from Salt and Pepper, and oh, he might know, five kills Mentor Void Ray from Pimos. Trying to morph in more photon cannons, it's seemingly ineffective. And there's the kill down, the charge down, and the big frown as he dies! But another pair of Void Rays storms the front gate, they must retreat. Oh no, the Stargate's trying to produce as best as they can, but now we see Pimos suddenly panicking, scrambling, realizing the situation he's in. My god, Salt and Pepper, the diva of chocolate. Count Ichila. Well, Ichila is not a fruit product, but that's okay. We see Pimas trying to stumble forward back from this seemingly impossible recovery. Oh no. Pimas expanding to the only safe place on the map, the map with a couple of cans to defend the top right next to the orange assimilator. And right now, Salt and Pepper needs to do needs to do the dirty business. He needs to do the counterattack. He's re-expanding to the to the top. He's completely blocked off expanding at this location for no reason. And there we also see a probe moving out by Pimas. He's trying to find some way through. It looks like he just wants to get over there. And it looks like the container's been broken from Pimos, but oh no! The top right expansion does get taken down, the charging up Void Race, but a huge army of Void Race from Pimos. He needs to kill anything he can. He kills off one pylon, he kills off another. Huge damage! Unleash on the Stalkers! The fully charged Void Race taken out one, taken out two, but be careful, but be careful, Pimos, but be careful, but be careful! There's a lot of Stalkers, he needs to stay fully charged, and he doesn't get the pylon! Oh no, and Pimos leaves the game because that's what happens when you say GG. I drooled. That's what happens when you say GG prematurely. You sometimes lose, and then you appear upon the day nine daily, and you're gonna take a trip to Frown Town in the Frown Bus, and no one wants to take a ride on the Frown Bus. It's very lonely, and you don't wear seatbelts. So let's go ahead and hop into the next game. The next game is going to involve uh, a little bit of PvZ action. I think everyone's in the mood for some PvZ. Um, wow. 
I didn't realize we had been going for so long. That's fine. That's fine. I'm going to find this. We're going to do... This might be even a little bit long of a fun day Monday. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought that I, Day 9, so underprepared for fun day Monday, could have such a smorgasbord of replays for you? It's all I can do to give myself an ego boost after the battering I received from none other than fanatic MSI Sun himself. I'm such a newbie. We got Zoidberg in the bottom left. In the top right, we have Silly Goose! Silly Goose, who screams with weirdness and silliness all about the map. And we do see Zoidberg going interestingly for the pylon outside the front. Gonna go for an early wall off. We call it an early eventual wall off. He's gonna get those pylons down at some point. There's the core and another gateway. And I'm walled off. What do you want, huh? I walled off. I watch the daily. It tells me I gotta not keep things unwalled. I'm walling off. Back off. That's what Zoidberg's thinking right now. He's pretty defensive. He gets pretty upset. But he's against Silly Goose, who likes to, you know, uh, do jokes of silliness. I mean, it's not a tight wall off, but you know what? The wall's there. The very least, you can't argue that this is not a wall that might not be a wall off. But I mean, who's who's listening to all the nitpicking, huh? I'm expanding. In the meantime, we do see Silly Goose taking himself many an expo that he can. We see the Zerglings beginning to knock down on the destructible rocks, which will take upwards of six minutes with two Zerglings. Uh, we do see the Assimilator going down as well. For the record, it actually should be six minutes, because with six Zerglings, it takes two minutes to kill off a destructible rock. So with two Zerglings, it should take six. Hey ladies, hey, what's up? What's up? Doing some knowledge. Zoidberg now going to be warping in a handful more stalkers. We now see uh, the stalker moving forthward widthwise across the map, where it will run into things that it is not particularly good against, and it will be able to take that reconnaissance back in a body bag. There's Silly Goose moving out his overlords. Here it comes, Stargate en route from Zoidberg, a forge upgrading unit. Zoidberg has not really violated any rules yet, but still, he's walled himself in, kind of, except for this little slit here. And he will be going for a Void Ray tech, I would presume. Oh no. Ooh. I'm feeling excited. Oh shit! In the meantime, Zoidberg's dying! Oh my god! And it looks like the counter to a Protoss that walls in with gateways. <laughs> The counter to a Protoss that walls in with gateways, cybernetics, cores, and expands. The counter of this is to just attack at any point. <laughs> you just walk up and you kill the shit out of him. And if we look at the food count... Yeah, Silly Goose is killing the shit out of him. It's not close. Let's see if Silly... or if Zoidborg can do any sort of magic. <laughs> see if he can hold off the counter of attacking at any point point, try to get him to unattack. Oh my gosh, look at this. Silly Goose, Silly Goose been killing off some workers. Oh my god, nine workers killed. That's such a cool number of workers to kill. Bing! Oh yes, lots of excitement incoming. The drool is flowing as my sentence constructions are becoming increasingly more complex and the sentence is long with excessive amounts of a positives and comma and a nidus network. Oh no, he can't even build a pylon to spot for this because he's not allowed to do that in this fun day Monday. But a Mada ship is coming out. There is one redeeming quality to Zoidberg. He kicks ass. Carrier coming out. Oh, he kicks ass. This is the worst wall I've ever seen. They just marched right on out. That is not an ultralisk proof wall. And we see Zoidberg moving out. Overlord taking some damage. Zoidberg moving in for the kill. And in the backup, we see, uh-oh, the mothership from Zoidberg. The lag jitter has landed in the game, but oh no, oh no, oh no, nice worm. That's the noise of a Nidus network. Zoidberg, he's going for it. He's going for it. He's sacrificing the main. Let's see, he's going to have to make incredible use of this mothership. It's moving at kind of a slow rate. Zoidberg, do something, Zoidberg. Do something. He's utilizing micro. Micro, keeping the carrier in the back, and in the, oh, at the front, at the front, at the front, at the front, it's the attack, and it looks like he's now making a pair of overseer cocoons, and he's picking off one over, okay, he's not. <coughs> oh, I'm allergic to detection, excuse me, and there it is, he's trying to kill off the overseer, he gets one, he gets another, 
But oh no, the roach is still managing to do damage, but it's okay, the carrier is utilizing micro. <laughs> Which you know all about if you watch that last Monday Monday, Zoidberg now. Doing massive amounts of damage. He takes out the amazing expansion, but it looks like the mothership is gonna fall! But Zoidberg looking not so good. In the unit counting station, we see 18 workers. His army of stalkers is slowly dwindling. He's picking off as many an overlord as he can, and the Hydralists are there to deal the necessary damage to unleash the amounts of pain that are so required to kill off stalkers. And there it is. Silly Goose in a terrible mood will need to be dumped to pull out of this one. Does he have any other Nidus networks falling? No. That's the only one. <laughs> Silly Goose. <laughs> Yeah. It's like me on my birthday when I had Del Taco. I was just like that Nidus Network, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean, I was worshipping the porcelain god, if you know what I mean. I was just tossing a couple cookies, if you catch my drift. Silly Goose throwing down a spore crawler and a spine crawler. Ordinarily used to detect a dark templar, but in this circumstance used to do detection for a mother... Or no, he actually doesn't have a mothership out at this point. In the meantime, we see the attack coming up. The ruthless carrier stalker sentry force advancing forward. Only 20 workers out right now. Can the army do enough damage? And he's... He's attacking his own hatchery! His own hatchery? You silly goose. Wait, let's take a look at that. Let's do that in slow motion. That's right. Let's 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 do your shame on normal speed. Alright, here we go. Here's the queen. She disintegrates. There's a spine crawler going down. Totally again looking a lot like I did after I had Del Taco for my birthday. And here come the units. Quickly, all right, begin shooting the sentries. Attack the hatchery! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, silly goose. <laughs> that all happened in slow motion. Oh man, let's actually come, let's look at your drones, silly goose, let's look at your drones. Oh man, oh god. Oh, silly goose. Oh, the amount of pain you could have unleashed if you not attacked your own hatchery. It's actually going to be okay. Well, no, it's not. The Hydros are gone. Zoidberg! With how many units to shoot up? Zoidberg can use micro. Alright, looks like Zoidberg, he's going to be able to pick off a hatchery! Oh! But in the meantime, a counterattack from Roaches moving into the southern area. Dealing damage. Zoidberg, 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 Zoidberg. Zoidberg, Zoidberg, Zoidberg. Oh, silly goose, silly goose, silly goose. Needs to kill this one guy. Oh no. Stalkers come back. I'm Zoidberg! Zoidberg took an expansion! And it looks like long range mining going on by Silly Goose. He ended up losing his expansion, helped in part largely by a lot of his own units. Silly Goose still is ahead in the food count. 48 workers, he has 4 Hydralisks up, and it looks like he's making two more hatcheries. A hatchery here, a hatchery here. I don't think Silly Goose realizes how not far behind he is. The Nidus Network in the main is down. Zoidberg, Zoidberg, Zoidberg utilizing Micro. He does seem to have 8 carriers out right now. And by 8 carriers, I mean 8 interceptors for 1 carrier. But a second one is en route. Oh! Silly Goose goes to do the amazing counterattack to kill off something, but it looks like there's only 19 workers, most of which- Oh, actually here! He's counterattacking in the wrong location! <gasps> he finds it. Oh no, we see one Hydros being produced, and the Zergling is there, picking off probes. Oh, he gets exploded into Gak. And again, hitting the expansion! Silly Goose, you're still ahead! Pull back and make some Hydralisks! In the main, we see- Oh no! Where are the Hydras? He has five Hydras! Where are they? Are they in the not- Where are they? They're over here! There's a carrier from Zoidberg, also microing, but not well enough. It looks like this is going to get killed off. Zoidberg may have done it. Who'd have thought someone who submits to the Funday Monday would ever win? Well, everyone would, because this is my show, and you, fine viewers of the Day 9 Daily Kick-Ass. Now, ordinarily, I'd wrap up now, but I'm not gonna, because I have another game to watch. So let's go ahead and watch what happens when two Fun Day Mondayers collide. That's right, two people not building any pylons in their own bases. In the purple and the yellow, we have two buddies, two friends, two legendary enemies dueling it out on Tal Darim Altar. 
or Taldry Malta if you speak English, but if you speak Day English, it is Taldry Malta. Exabyte versus Mr. Natural. As opposed to Mr. Synthetic, his arch enemy, we see one pylon going down here for some reason. And there it is. It's going to be able to defend uh, an attack at the 30 minute mark if a guy's going for a vulnerable third base. In the meantime, we do see the front from Exabyte. Getting a little bit increasingly constricted, boa constrictor style. The gas is going down by Mr. Natural. His build, so predictable. Another probe going all the way down here to build a cybernetic score on 17. And it appears, oh, Mr. Natural! Wrong matchup, Mr. Natural. Building a pylon in his opponent's natural, making sure no hatchery can go down there, which indeed it won't, because Exabyte is playing Protoss. I don't know why, I guess I'm hungry. I'm just I'm just so drooly today. I'm trying to think of if there's any really good uh, drool store. Oh yeah, I guess there was something really good where, um, uh, this, is, this is gonna sound like a thinly veiled brag, but I remember once I was in high school and I got the highest score on the math test. I know this sounds like a brag, but it's really not. I mean, I'm good at math, as, as you will note by the previous daily, I'm just saying, or by previous, earlier on the, shut up. So I, uh, I got the number one score in my math test, and and the teacher was like, I'd just like to give a little congrats to Sean, got the high score on the math test, but I had inadvertently fallen asleep on a piece of paper, so when he said, like, congratulate Sean Plot on the math test, I went, oh, and I drooled onto the paper, so it was stuck to my face, and I actually tried to play it off cool for five seconds, I was like, oh, thanks, thanks, coach, thanks, because everyone in high school's name is coach, if they're a teacher, I was like, yeah, thanks, coach, thanks, thanks, I had to pull that sucker off. That's your drool story, the day nine drool story of the day. All right, I have another story. I'm wondering if it's funny enough to tell. I'll, I'll, I'll put that one in my back pocket and share it one day. In the meantime, it looks like the infamous proxy robotics facility from Mr. Natural. There it is going down, Mr. Natural, the proxy robotics facility. Mr. Natural now doing some scouting forward and it looks like, oh! The proxy Stargate. This is a little too proxy. This is a little bit too proxy. Look look at this. Look at that. This is thinner than Kira Knightley's waist. That is not a lot of distance between those. That is just very This is very thin. Wow, that is just not a lot of space between there, man. There's the Nexus going down from Exabyte upon eliminating the pylon of Mr. Natural. And there's Exabyte building another pylon in his own... Well, not in his own base. He's actually not allowed to build anything from here and inwardler. There is the... Oh, looks like the warp gate research going down. Mr. Natural. Mr. Natural. Building a fleet beacon. For the proxy mothership tech opening. So he's going to be able to build a mothership back home, utilizing the tech that's built right here. I mean, if you just look. Wow, that is close. And it looks like some probes are under attack. Oh, no. Oh, no, Mr. Natural. Not going to. He needs to prevent. Why? Okay, these are these guys are friends. The Fun Day Monday theme is no pylons in your own base. What are you scouting his base for? You're both doing it. What is this probe? What are you expecting to find, Exabyte's probe? What's going to be in there? My god, he still has a Nexus and both his geysers. He hasn't he hasn't killed off his own Nexus. He hasn't pulled a silly goose. Just kidding, silly goose. Well, I'm kind of not. That's actually pretty funny. I just want to know, for any of you uh, who did not know, uh, there's a famous French pro gamer named uh, Elki. Uh, A.K.A. Bertrand Groupelier. He's a poker pro now. But when he was a professional Brood War player in South Korea, he inadvertently had a vulture start attacking a Nexus. Or excuse me, start attacking one of his own command centers. And, I mean, a Hellion does damage, or a vulture does damage about as quickly as a Hellion, right? And one vulture kills the command center. It's shooting at it for like five minutes in this game. Boom, choo, boom, ching. Boom, doo, boom, bish, and it's like two health, two health, two health, and he kills his own thing. So I guess what I should say is, Mr. Natural, you have not per pulled a Bertrand Grobelier. Anyways, it looks like <gasps> Exabyte. Uh-oh, it looks like he might begin the mothership. No, he's actually, <laughs> incidentally, 
He's building a carrier. Exabyte. Weirdly enough, has his own Stargate building phoenixes. It looks like Exabyte trying to sneak in with a proxy pylon. It's going to get taken down. More gateways going down by Mr. Natural. And there it is. He spots the proxy carrier rush. Exabyte's warp gates have just finished. He's going to be warping in a round of units to do the best he can to defend. He needs to kill it off in time. And it looks like his choice is to not do anything at the moment. And the carrier pops out and it has four interceptors. Which immediately start getting shot at by the phoenixes here. Some stalkers coming out. And it looks like the one carrier. Come on, build them, build them. Come on, get those interceptors out. Do the damage. Pull back. Micro, micro. Oh, it wasn't enough. I should have left the Robo, then I could have gone Proxy Immortal. And it looks like purple. LOL! Not fair. There's the trash talk the little talk. He's just gonna kill off one pylon. He's not gonna kill off all the pylons. He's gonna come back. He's just gonna take a little bit of time. Baby steps. He's on a pylon killing diet. He doesn't want to kill too many. There's a quota for the day, so he's gonna go home. Leave both of these powered. And oh, it looks like... In the meantime... In the meantime, Exabyte taking a page out of Mr. Natural's book saying, Aha, proxy stargates. I'm going to do that as well. Like two proxy stargates going down. They can be reinforced by this warp gates, but I kind of have a feeling. I don't know. Call it spider sense. I have a feeling we won't be seeing that. Just, just saying. Just saying. So we do see, oh, it looks like... Mr. Natural did indeed try to build another carrier. He's like, well, maybe he forgot, but no. Looks like the Stalkers will be able to take out one and now starting to knock down everything. And there it is. Oh, Void Ray's getting produced. There's a Chrono Boost. Mr. Natural. Mr. Natural. Oh, going for the Dark Templar because the Dark Templar is the unit of the day, unbeknownst to me. Unintentional by Day 9, Mr. Natural. <gasps> he sees that there's a Void Ray out. Exabyte, 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 Exabyte. <laughs> LOL. They, they love their misspellings of LOL. Look at the message log. Whoops. Yeah, let's. Let's go to the tutorial. Let's play out the Protoss Tech Tree. Ooh, this is actually a really nice interface. I'm going to play around in there sometime. But look at this. LOL. 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 These guys are LOLers. LOLing. Uh oh. Uh oh. And it looks like, amazingly enough, Mr. Natural is going to try to kill off the pylons at first. He's killing off the back pylon. Little Void Race get done in time. It looks like he's trying to kill off the pylons and they're getting awfully close, but no. Exabyte will not get them off. In fact, Exabyte will just sit in his base with a huge army. Oh! Oh my god! He has five halves-ish as many units. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. And there it is, Mr. Natural. Now having to hit back to equilibrium. I know, oh my god. <gasps> DTs have been morphed in. Here come the DTs. Oh my god, they can slip into the main. There they go. There they go. They're going to be able to sneak their way into the main. There, one got in. The other one. The other one. Okay, here he goes. Oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. Yes. Managing to work his way through with Mensa maze solving like capabilities. And oh no. Oh no, purple. Purple getting hallucinating response to seeing the Dark Templar that are now annihilating all probes that are around. And it looks like Exabyte, <gasps> he's going for it. And he's building hes building a robotics facility. I see it in production. And it's... <laughs> and there it is. I found the robotics facility. It's at the other end of the map. All right, here's the robotics facility. And hold on, I got to drag my mouse a couple times. And here are the Dark Templar. There, there they are. They're all the way back down here. Oh, no, they're coming up with the army. All right, Exabyte. He's going to have... Amazingly, he's building a robotics facility at the far north. And he's almost touching the top of the map. He's touching as far north as he can. He's going to block those minerals. And here it comes. Exabyte throwing down some force fields. Oh, crap. That's a lot of force fields. He's throwing... Oh, no. It's still a crack. My god, Exabyte, never be a plumber. I would not trust you with my leaky pipes. That sounded far more sexual than I had intended. But this is what happens when I think of things and I'm like, I'm like, Brain, is this an okay thing to say? And Brain's like, do it. It's fine, Mouth. Don't worry about it. And Mouth is like, if you say so, that's okay, Exabyte. 
I'm, I'm just not going to trust you with my leaky pipes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mr. Natural, swing on in. Don't worry, Mouth. It's fine. Exabyte mounting an offensive, and it looks like he's finished his robotics facility. Amazingly, no observer is yet in construction, and um, amazingly, a gateway wall off to prevent an encroaching army from coming in. Force fields being thrown down willy-nilly. But it looks like Exabyte. He's... He's got it! He's building an Observer! And if we come back to the army tab, we do see that Purple's army, the army of Exabyte, is much huger. <gasps> Exabyte warping in units into the main and Day 9 getting increasingly into the Dragon Ball Z voice. And here it is, warping in units to the high ground. My god, that's hard on the throat. But it's no problem at all. Vegeta! He's building a freaking Observer, Vegeta! And there it is, it looks like he's gonna try to swing farther back around and he has the Observer here and he's gonna be able to kill off the Dark Templar! And in the main, everything's dying because there's no way he can even build the units to defend. Lift him! Lift him! Got that! Got him! Bam! And in the meantime, we do see the DTs of Mr. Natural doing Mr. Damage to Mr. Everything. And there it is, it looks like. No. Mr. Natural taking a lot of damage. This army is so freaking huge. And in the meantime, it looks like <gasps> Mr. Natural taking a page out of Chicken Zitstain's book. <laughs> you remember Chicken Zitstain? That's right. Expanding all over the map in game two. We do see. Uh oh, uh oh. Lifting him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Take him down. Lift him up. Take him down. Lift him up. Take him down. And there it is. It looks like Exabyte doing a good job. Exabyte. <gasps> 60 food to 14 food. And it looks like the proxy Stargate response. Proxy Stargate is going to be an effective play in this position. And it looks like Mr. Natural realizing his favorite unit is indeed the Dark Templar. So, it's just going to keep on building that. And we do see all oh, 1DT out. Oh, no. He needs to keep his army together. Exabyte. 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 He needs to keep this army together. He's managed to kill it all. But Exabyte, oh no, Exabyte, now naked on the map, Mr. Natural can see absolutely everything and can upload them to Facebook as incriminating evidence. And we do see Mr. Natural, oh no, oh no, there's the DT Shrine at Mr. Natural trying to chrono loose. This army is absolutely freaking unbelievably giganteric. But Exabyte's army is still so big, 34, and keep in mind these probes are out. Oh my gosh, where are these eight Phoenicians? There they are. Phoenixes, have they managed to spot the other base? Oh no, they know nothing about it. And there's the... He lost all his buildings! Wait. Wait, wait, wait. I guess, I guess that's it. I guess that, I guess that wraps up. Yeah! Woo! Oh, I did it. I did Fun Day Monday. I thought it wouldn't be possible. Shen has shattered my self-confidence. He's allowed to. He gets third place whenever he seems to enter a tournament. And you know what? Thank you for tuning in. This week is Prodos Week on the Day 9 Daily. Definitely tune in Tuesday through Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific for the PVZ Tomorrow, the PVT on Wednesday, and the PVP on Third Thursday. We'll be reviewing all sorts of fun, fancy stuff, and hopefully even getting the opportunity to review some of those incredible replays of OGS MC from the recent NASL Grand Final. <laughs> For next week's Fun Day Monday topic, I would like you to submit a replay of the following to Day9, excuse me, to Monday at Day9.tv. You must play as Zerg, and you may only attack when your units are under creep. This includes flying units. If you have a pack of mutilus, you have to drop creep down, and then you have to have the mutilus shooting on top of the creep, or from on top of the creep. You, you can move your units off the creep to do scouting and suiciding and all that good jazz, but you may not attack unless creep is underneath. If you want to contaminate a building, have creep underneath it. If you want to fungal growth those workers, have creep underneath the infestors. That's going to wrap it up for Day 9 Daily, number 322. I'm Day 9. I'm going to go. It's a kiss for you, sexy thing. I can't wait till we get together and you dump me. Oh, I'll feel refreshed and good and snazzy as I should.